Shutter speed. Aperture. ISO. If you guys ever want to be a professional photographer, you have to understand how these three things affect and play an important role in your photography. Now let's think about this entire concept in the world of our eyes. If us humans were to walk around everywhere with our eyes closed, the shutter speed will be what determines how long we're able to open our eyes for to look at the world. The aperture will be what's controlling our eyes to focus on what, and the ISO is all of the artificial lighting, such as the lamps, car headlights, you know, this ring light that's lighting up my face right now, everything, any sort of lighting except for the sun. Okay, so now let's go in more depth about shutter speed. So if your eyes were closed like this, the faster you're opening and closing your eyes, the faster your shutter speed is. So if a guy was to run from left to right and open and close my eyes extremely fast, what I would have saw was a single frame of that guy running from left to right. I wouldn't have been able to see him running from this side to this side, only a single frame. But if I were to open my eyes for longer and then close my eyes, I would be able to see more of his journey. Your camera basically works the exact same way. So if your camera shutter speed was really fast, all it would capture is a single frame of the person running. But if your shutter speed was slower, then it would capture pretty much the entire journey of the guy running. Keep in mind that the faster your shutter speed is, the darker your image would be because it's opening and closing the shutter extremely fast, therefore, the less time your camera has to let light hit the sensor and vice versa for the slower shutter speed. Now the aperture is basically what your eyes decide to focus on. So if you're looking at something really far away like scenery or a city skyline, you want to close your aperture aka making it smaller. Similar to real life when you want to look at the whiteboard at the back of the class and you're a blind Asian kid because you spent your entire night playing league you would squint your eyes. You know, you would squint your eyes as hard as you can to see what the teacher is writing about on the whiteboard, but then when you're doing your homework, you know, you open your eyes, you widen, you widen your eyes to look at the homework, you know, just because it's much closer to you. Now, this is basically when you widen the aperture. So when you open up the aperture, it's basically used to focus on things that are closer to the camera. A lot of photographers will open their aperture to take photos of portraits, to take photos of products, anything on that sort. This is basically the same effect that a lot of modern day smartphones use for their portrait mode. The background is blurred and they're only focusing on the main subject. Similar to shutter speed, your aperture could also control how bright and dark your photo is. So when you have a higher aperture, aka your hole is smaller, then your photo will be darker. And when you widen your aperture, you know, opening up your aperture, your overall image will be much brighter. Last but not least, we have ISO or ISO. I didn't really understand what this does for the majority of my professional career. However, the only way I understood it was it's just basically fake light. To be more specific, your ISO is basically how sensitive the sensor inside your camera is. When you turn up your ISO, the sensor inside your camera is more sensitive, which ultimately leads to a much brighter image. Keep in mind though that the higher you turn up your ISO, the quality of your image decreases. We often refer to this as a noisy image or a grainy image. That's why a lot of professional photographers prefer to use bigger DSLRs versus smaller DSLRs. The main reason for that is because the bigger DSLRs have a much bigger sensor which gives them much more flexibility to turn up the ISO to kind of get harder shots. And finally, to wrap it up, all three of these things is what professionals refer to as camera settings. If you guys were to ever be hired by National Geographic or to open your own art gallery, then it will be required for you to present these settings so people don't think that you photoshopped like that picture of a leopard attacking a goose or whatever you guys shoot. Luckily, all modern day cameras have these settings built into their images so you can check what your camera settings were when you shot the photo in Lightroom or Photoshop. If you guys use any other photo editing programs other than those two, I'm sorry, but I don't know what you're doing with your life. In all seriousness, if you guys are able to understand how these three settings affect your overall image, you will be able to create super beautiful images like this. 